Hey, I want you to meet Umbra. She and I have been solving problems together for 12 years, but today I want to solve a problem for her. See, she loves to hang out with us while we cook, but she can't reach the countertops. And since the request to rebuild the entire kitchen at six inches tall got vetoed, we're gonna have to compromise. But I think I have a solution for that. And it's the Kitty Cooking Tray, a cat-sized countertop that can be brought to the perfect feline height. It features two sturdy hooks for mounting onto any drawer or chair, a removable magnetic tray for easy cleaning, and a convenient folding design to save space. Turn your kitchen into a cat cafe with the new Kitty Cooking Tray. I hate it, I'm out. Oh, Mark, that's aggressive. Let's get started on a prototype, and then we can work out the kinks from there. For this project, there's a beautiful piece of tiger maple that someone took a picture of and then printed out on plastic onto this MDF broken IKEA furniture. So we're going to use this. First, we got to get this cut down to something that's more appropriately sized for a cat. I'm trying to let go of perfectionism for prototyping purposes, so nothing is measured numerically, just sort of eyeballed. I want this to be able to fold down the middle, so I've cut this into two pieces. And now with both pieces in hand, I just need to clean up the edges. Ah. Ah. As a makeshift hinge, I'm just going to use duct tape for now. It folds decently enough, now it just needs to hang. For the hooks, I'm going to use this piece of 2 inch PVC pipe that I had flattened out for a previous project. I cut it down to something more reasonable and then I ripped it in half on the scroll saw. Here you can see me taking some measurements for where I want to bend the plastic in order to make the hook shape. And I'm bending it in this way because I wanted the hooks to fold into the body of the kitty cooking tray. And that relied on this delicate sort of hinging mechanism, and I end up changing this later, but I thought it might be good to include this as part of the trial and error process. To give the PVC its hook shape, I just hit it with a heat gun and then bent it around a piece of brass. Then I clamped it shut. Unfortunately, by the time I actually got it clamped shut, it had completely cooled down. The intention behind making the hooks this shape is so that they can accommodate a variety of chairs. The chair that I intend to use is a slat back chair, which has a sort of flat plank that supports your back. However, with a wider diameter at the top of the hook, you could accommodate rail back chairs, which have a sort of bar that supports your back. Ideally, the hook that I made would have a larger radius, but we're just testing things out. When I was trying to attach the hooks to the tray, I had it in my head for some reason that the hooks had to hinge inwards towards the tray and sort of fold like a book. Trying to force that to work was causing all types of issues, and then all of a sudden, a much better solution hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, hang on. Now hang on. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The, the aha moment. All right, now all we have to do is drill some holes through here. Oh my gosh, that is so much easier. What was I doing? All I had to do to implement our new swiveling solution was to just drill a couple of holes, countersink them, and then screw the arms into place. As I was about halfway through this process, I realized that the hooks would be really hard to use just because they didn't flare out at the ends to sort of catch whatever they were going to hang on. So I fixed this with the heat gun and a pencil. Now we have a hook. It folds, it swivels, it hangs, and honestly, I think it slaps, but the last thing that I wanted to add, just for the prototype, was a little magnetic tray so that I can put kitty treats in there and remove it when it needs cleaning. The top of this Altoids tin seems like the perfect candidate, just because it's made out of food safe steel and it'll stick to the magnets, but can be wiped clean. I quickly trace out where I want the tray to sit so that I know where to position the magnets. 
Then using a quarter inch wood chisel, I just carve out some little recesses where the magnets can get glued in. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that using wood tools on MDF will dull the tools very quickly. So I'll take any and all tips you have on working with MDF, especially if that's something you have experience with. I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear that the duct tape hinge I made is a little wobbly, so I followed it up with some more duct tape and then laid some staples as closely as I could to the crease, just to make that action a little tighter and a little more reliable. All right, we got our first working prototype. We're nearly ready to try it out, but I just need to do one thing first. This is the chair that I wanna use for testing the kitty cooking tray, but Umbra doesn't like it because it's too slippery. So I made some improvements, but I need a tester. Hey Umbi, can I get some help? I need you to try this chair out and tell me if it's grippier. Is that any better? It is? Okay, good. Is that gonna work? You like it? Okay, fantastic. All right, here comes the moment of truth. But to be honest, at this point I was pretty confident. I know my cat pretty well. I know the thing she likes. This is gonna be a home run. If anything, we're just gonna have to work out a few kinks and we'll be golden. The old standby trick of offering a cat a raw potato didn't work, so maybe a kitty treat will work better. I show her it's not in my hands, and she seems to know it's there, but even when she does go up there, it looks less ergonomic than when she was just putting her hands on the oven. Pause. W whatever. I tried moving the tray down a rung, which allowed her to grab the treat more easily, but she just pulled it over to the carpet and ate it over that. We tried this again the next mealtime, but she wasn't having any of it. Every time we tried to put it up there, she would just pull our hands down and wouldn't even attempt going up there. So it was pretty clear that she didn't like using the tray. But one thing was apparent. She really liked using the chair. That was a hit. I just feel like I should mention that she chooses to go into this little cabinet. So I think it's pretty clear that she doesn't like the tray, but she does like the carpet square. And so let's pivot. Instead of the tray, which I really like and I think is cool and I think it has cool action, she doesn't appreciate that at all. So what she does appreciate is something that's soft, grippy. This is could be grippier. It's held on by strings, but it's it's not going to stay in place. And um, this could be trimmed down a bit to fit the chair better. And I want to add maybe some Velcro straps right here so that it can grab onto the legs of the chair and uh, stay in place there. And then one other feature would be uh, stuff seems to fall on the carpet here, like little scraps of food when she's, you know, tasting or smelling things. And so while we don't like to feed her too much, cats are pretty much strict carnivores and there's most things they can't have, like sulfates and all kinds of things. Um, but where appropriate, she does get to try a little nibble of maybe avocado or something like that. So uh, the magnetic tray idea, where is it? The magnetic tray idea from the kitty cooking tray isn't bad. And so I want to incorporate that into the whatever we're going to call this. And so let me make those improvements and then we'll get our... So let me make these improvements and then we'll get Umbra and we'll see how we did. We got there in the end, I guess. I start with the easiest part by marking where I want to trim the excess carpet off of the sides. Then I just follow that with a couple passes of the box cutter. Next, I want to key out where these legs poke above the seat.
I want to use Velcro loops to have the carpet hold onto the chair, so I mark out on the corners where I need to have the Velcro attached. Something like this, and then I'll cut the Velcro loop in half. At this point, I didn't know how I was going to attach the Velcro, but I figured that sewing through carpet would be pretty tough, so I started with staples. And for some reason, I tested the staple right in the middle of the carpet instead of where the staple should have gone. Then for some reason, I try using my hands. And when that doesn't work, I try a hammer. And when that doesn't work, I go back to the staple gun. Staple gun won't work now. Back to the hands. Maybe the problem is just that I don't have a sturdy backing. Yep, that seems to do it. It's... It's stuck. My hindsight tends to be better than my foresight. The thing that I've stapled into is a wooden anvil that I made out of a hickory branch, and I discovered that hickory makes staples permanent. And we go back to the hands. Defying all logic, this time I'm in. Even after my admittedly underwhelming achievement, I still had to go through the Velcro. This was easier, just not easy. I hammered the staple flat and then tested the strength. Good to go. Now I just need to do that seven more times. Thankfully, the others were way, way easier. That's the thing that I would love to say to you without it being a complete lie. All in all, I think this took me about an hour, which is way longer than it should have. I used like seven different tools to recreate the job of a stapler. Behold, something that almost certainly already existed. I have made this, and I have also made a very large mess in the kitchen. After a quick trim and some gratuitous strength testing, I think we're good to go. Sturdy. Finally, I want to transfer the magnetic dish idea from the tray to the carpet, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to stick to the magnets, like maybe embed little pieces of metal or something, when this whole time I'm already using Velcro. I could just continue to use Velcro and it would be so easy. Here I'm gluing the hook side of the Velcro, which is the wrong side. I want the hook side to connect to the loops of the carpet. It's an easy mistake to make, I just need to pay a little bit more attention. I glued the wrong side again. I don't even think there's anything I can say in defense of that one. After devoting what is frankly an embarrassing amount of brain power to finishing the rest of that, I give it a test and it works great. It sticks when it needs to stick and it pulls up when it needs to release. Although around these parts, my approval doesn't mean much. We gotta go to a higher authority. Man, you love this cushion, huh? I guess the folding tray idea was just a little overcooked. We never needed that thing anyway. Oh, wait, no, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I, I just, I was overcomplicating. Kitty cooking tray! Well, we lost another one of our darling inventions, huh girl? It's okay. I'm so pale. I've thought long and hard about improvements that could be made to this cushion, but everything that I come up with has its own set of drawbacks. If I made the cushion more aesthetically pleasing or comfier, taller, it wouldn't be as easy to clean or as grippy. The food dish could be made out of something nicer, like ceramic. However, this is heavy, it's breakable, and it's not as low profile. It's easier to get a paw up under here. All of this being said, Umbra loves the cushion just the way that it is. It helps her get up closer to the counter so that she can sniff ingredients, and it helps us bring the ingredients to her without having to bend down as far. 
So what does that mean? I think it means it's time to stop iterating and designing. We've hit gold, stop digging. I have a lot of fun and exciting projects in my head that I want to get started on. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.